And good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. We, I'm so excited to be here with you today. My name is Pastor Al Kennan. It's my pleasure. It's my honor. It's my privilege to be here to facilitate this prayer conference call, to, put, to, to stand with you, to be here with you as uh, we petition God collectively. We petition God for that which he has for us, for his assistance, for his grace, for his mercy, as we petition God to intercede and intervene on our behalves and to help us in with the things we struggle with, to help us with the things we're up against, to help us with the things that that uh that that challenge us. We I believe that God is going to do something awesome this morning. I believe that God is going to do something amazing this morning. I believe that God is going to meet us right where we are and He's going to address our needs, our issues, our struggles, our problems. And I believe that when He does, we are going to to uh, experience a, a, a mighty, 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 mighty move uh, on his behalf. We're going to, on, on our behalf, we're going to experience God like we never experienced before. We're going to experience God work things out and turn things around. We're going to experience God pick things up and make things better. We're going to experience God literally uh, uh, reshaping things and remolding things right before our very eyes such that so that they work in conformity with his spirit with his will with his way and they work in such a way that they will uh, enable us to do that which God has called us to do as his disciples and his stewards amen praise God again welcome to uh, today's edition of inspirational Wednesdays my name is pastor Al Kennan I want to give a bit shout out for those who are joining us today through uh, uh, Facebook Live, through Periscope Live, uh, again, as well as on the actual prayer conference call. We want to thank those who are joining us through YouTube today. God has just been good and faithful to us, and we are trusting and believing God for everything he does, for everything he's doing, and how he's going, uh, to, like we said earlier, to bless us tremendously during this call this morning. Amen. 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 Let's do this. Let's have our opening word of prayer. Then we're going to move straight into our devotional this morning. And then after that, we are going to move into the prayer section of our call where we get to hear from you about what it is that you would like for us to pray with you and for you. Uh, amen. Uh, in this time. OK, so here, let's have our opening word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day you have made, God. We are glad. We are rejoiced again. And God, we pray that, God, you will have your way at this time, that, God, you will move through uh, this call, that, God, where two or more together, that you, we would touch and agree, that we would be able to lift up our prayer concerns, our prayer needs, our, our worries, our fears, uh, our doubts, our, our struggles, our stresses, our issues, our problems, our predicaments, our trials, our tribulations. That God, we could be completely honest, naked, and transparent with you on this call. And that God, as we are sharing with you, you are already moving on our behalf to work things out, to make things better to improve things, to increase things, to multiply things, to keep some things away from us, to protect us from, from some things, to get, provide us a path in the sea that, God, you are moving on our behalf right this very instant, God. And, God, we are trusting you, believing you, hoping and praying, God, that as, as God, you continue to work in our lives, that you, God, will do the amazing, the impossible, the incredible so that someone may see what you're doing in our lives and be drawn to you and be connected to you and be and enter into a saving relationship with you. God, we pray that this morning you be glorified, that God, you are glorified, that you are exalted, that you are honored, that you are praised through our interaction, through our sharing, through our uh, 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 interceding and praying for one another. And God, we pray 
that someone leads this call today edified. Someone leads this call today empowered. Someone leads this call today ready to tackle the world as your disciple and as your steward. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. <clears throat> amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the Old Testament book of Exodus? Amen. Amen. Our um, scriptorial focus this morning comes from Exodus chapter 14. We're going to jump around a little bit in Exodus chapter 14, okay? We're going to start with verse 15 and go to verse 18. Then we're going to jump to verse 21 and 22. Then we'll jump to 26 to 31, all right? So our scripture this morning is Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 through 18, 21 and 22, and 26 through 31. That's verses 15 through 18, 21 and 22, and 26 through 31. All right. The word of God, as read from the New Living Translation of the scripture, is as follows. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so that the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and his charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Jumping over to verse 21. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, with walls of water on each side. Jumping to verse 26. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and their charioteers. So as the sun began, began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh. Of all the Egyptians who chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that, that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians wash up on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Amen. Praise God. That is the word of God for the people of God this morning. The title of our devotional this morning is called To Accomplish God's Purpose, Part 17. Called to Accomplish God's Purpose, Part 17. Imagine what it must have felt like to walk through those walls of water. It was nighttime. The only light that was available to the Israelites were the light of the moon and the hand torches and the torches that they carried in their hands. Other than these two sources, there were no other sources of light that evening. Why are the sources of light available to the Israelites important for our devotional today, you may ask? This matter is important because our God wants us to know just how frightening and unnerving this experience was. We must remember that at this very time, things are in turmoil for the Israelites. Their celebration had been cut drastically short. While the Israelites were reveling in the might that Yahweh has shown over Pharaoh and all of Egypt through the ten plagues, Pharaoh and all of Egypt have had a change of heart. The Lord hardened the king's heart once again, and Pharaoh was, re was determined to reclaim the Israelites as Egyptian slaves. Our Heavenly Father permitted the king to feel disrespected and embarrassed. 
He allowed the brother to feel the pain and agony of losing time and time again to Israel's God. The Lord let it seethe in the brother's spirit. I can imagine nights that Pharaoh wasn't able to sleep because if he did, he saw over and over Yahweh defeating him again and again and again. Having taken all he could take, the king, de the king declared that he couldn't take no more. So Pharaoh gathered his army and pursued the freed Israelites with reckless abandon. At this very moment, good morning, Sister Fancy. At this very moment, the only thing preventing Pharaoh and his army from unleashing the full breath of their collective rage is the pillar of fire that stands between them and Israel. Exodus has informed us that God was present with Israel as they left Egypt on their way to Mount Sinai and then on, the, on their way to the Promised Land. During the day, the Lord God Almighty took the form of a pillar of clouds, while at night he took the form of a pillar of fire. To keep Pharaoh and the Egyptian army at bay, our Heavenly Father shifted from being a pillar of fire to becoming a great wall of fire. Good morning, uh, Reverend Henderson. We see you. Amen. Praise God. But in spite of this, the Israelites still complained. They still grumbled. And they still, they still accused Moses of not having their best interests at heart. They charged Moses with bringing him out of Egypt only to die in the wilderness. Moses had to do something. He had to figure something out. He needed a plan of attack and he needed it now. So Brother Pastor reached out to the Lord for guidance and assistance. The Lord's response to Moses brings us, the, more, the, Lord's, the Lord's response to Moses' request brings us to our scriptorial focus this morning. Yahweh instructed Moses to raise the staff of God in his hands above his head. As he did, the Lord caused a strong wind to come in and split the Red Sea from one bank of the sea to the next. While our God was behind the Israelite camp standing between it and the Egyptian army as a wall of fire, he was also present before the Israelites, dividing the water in half, enabling them to flee from the Egyptians on dry ground. We've learned thus far through this devotional series that one of God's explicit purposes is to free Israel from Egyptian domination. The Lord had initially accomplished that through the 10 plagues. He wore Pharaoh so far down that the king didn't want to see a or an Israelite. He was so humiliated and frustrated with their God that the brother didn't want to be around any of the Israelites. At that very moment, the freedom that Yahweh had bestowed upon Israel was threatened to be stamped out and stolen away. Pharaoh had come to the Israelite camp at the Red Sea for one purpose and one purpose only. Either the Israelites were going to voluntarily return to Egypt as slaves or they were going to die right there. Seeing his will, seeing that his will was that no Israelite died at the hands of their Egyptian pursuers, the Lord God Almighty provided the Israelites a path of escape. Our God did the impossible. He split the Red Sea in half so that they could safely free from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. The Lord provided the Israelites with a path of freedom that led them directly through the sea. Someone present on this prayer conference call this morning has found himself or herself stuck at the edges of his or her own personal Red Sea. As it looks currently, we can't continue moving forward because we have no boat to cross our Red Seas. We can't turn to the right and head in that direction because that direction leads us into the wilderness. It leads us 
further and further away from where God, the want, God wants us to be. We can't turn to our left and head in that direction because that direction leads us into the mountains. That's an extremely difficult path to take. It will require more from us than we're willing to or have the ability to give. We can't turn around and return back from where we came from because behind us is the very slavery and strongholds that our God has already freed us from. Not only that, but behind us is our past, fiercely trying to catch up with us and to enslave us. No, it looks like we're trapped. And it looks like we're trapped in a deadly predicament. What are we to do? Where shall we go? How will we escape? It's precisely at these moments when our God shows up and shows out. Our Heavenly Father does the impossible right there in front of us. He reveals a path in our Red Seas for us to escape safely from our deadly predicaments. It's right there in the midst of homelessness that someone finds a home to live in. It's right there in the midst of unemployment that someone finds a job and a career. It's right there in the midst of sickness and illness that someone finds healing. It's right there in the midst of brokenness that someone is made whole. It's right there in the midst of estrangement and separation that someone's marriage is reconciled and love is restored. It is right there in the midst of what we're going through, what we're dealing with, that we find that God has laid out for us a path of escape right through the sea, that he has split the sea so that we can walk across on that dry ground. You know what? Your path through the sea may be different from my path through the sea, but the fact remains that the Lord has provided each one of us with a miraculous path through the sea right at the very moment when it looked like that there were no more options available to us. Someone can shout this morning over the fact that we've had, we've had this Red Sea experience. Our Heavenly Father didn't let whatever it was that wanted to kill us to be victorious over us. In fact, while he was distracting it, he provided us with our means of escape. And if the truth be told, many of us are still walking the very path of escape that the Lord God Almighty has opened up in our seas of predicament and tribulations. This brings us back to where we began our devotional today, envisioning what the Israelites must have seen with their own eyes as they walked through the parted walls of water. If we will recall, the path through the Red Sea occurred at night. And during this time, there was no light other than the light of the moon and the light from the hand torches individual Israelites carried with them. What God wants us to envision is just how terrifying walking through these parted walls of water must have been. Because it's night, the water of the Red Sea would have looked black. While these waters were normally blue during the daytime, there was no light to cast that blue color during the night. Instead, the water would have been eerily dark, so dark that it would have been virtually impossible to see or otherwise discern what was floating within it as the Israelites passed through it. Let me help you understand just how dark this water is. If anyone has ever been on a cruise on the ocean, if you recall at nighttime as you were walking around the boat and having your little intimate moments with your loved one and your spouse and whoever you're with and you looked over the side of the boat, you noticed that the water wasn't blue, it was black. And why it was so black that it was reflecting the light of the moon that was hitting it. And here's the interesting thing. You could not see down into the water. You didn't know if there was a great whale under you or, or fish under you. You couldn't see because there was no light to cast a reflection. In fact, try this. I don't know if everyone, anyone's ever been scuba diving. If you've been scuba diving, they've taken you out on reefs. And you get to an edge of a reef where, where the glance where the stops. It just 
drops off. And anyone who's ever gone over the edge of that reef can testify that when you get down, it's black because it's so deep that the light that's going is that is going down in those depths cannot cannot reflect back up. That's how dark it was when the people were looking at the walls of water. This was not how it did not look how it did in, in the Ten Commandments with Charles and Heston. It looked frightening. It looked eerie. You did not know what was in those waters as you're walking through. And you did not know if you got close enough to those edge of those waters, if something would have reached out and grabbed you. Got, this was a scary, scary time uh, 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 for the Israelites. You know, and here's, a, here's another thing that God wants us to get. The typical Israelite had no indication of how long the water would remain parted. The only instruction they received that night was to immediately walk through the water. And they would have been urged to walk with haste. Get across the Red Sea as quickly as possible. Time was of the essence and dilly-dallying was strongly and strenuously discouraged. What I love about this part of Israel's Exodus story is that as terrifying as the parted waters seemed to be to the Israelites, these same parted, parted waters were more terrifying for the Egyptians. Exodus chapter 14 reveals us that at some point during the night, the Lord withdrew his presence from the rear of the Israelite camp. This meant that the great wall of fire that kept Pharaoh and the Egyptian army from bearing down upon the Israelites was extinguished. Seeing that this firewall no longer halted their advance upon their escaped slaves, the king and his soldiers collectively descended down upon the fleeing Israelites. It's right as the Egyptian army reached the very middle of the Red Sea that God told Moses to again raise the staff of God above his head. And when Moses did, the Lord stopped the east wind from blowing over the sea. Instantaneously, the walls of water came crashing down on top of the Egyptian army. In a matter of moments, that army was decimated and devastated. The final nail had been driven into Egypt's coffin. Egypt, as an imperial superpower, was no more. Here's the shouting moment for us today. The very means that the Lord provided Israel with, with to escape and flee Egypt was also the very weapon that the Lord God Almighty used to destroy Egypt. To Israel, the Red Sea is a place where Yahweh performed a miracle. Confronted with death, he enabled them to live. But to the, to the Egyptian, uh, to Egypt, the Red Sea is a place of absolute death, destruction, and devastation. Determined to kill Israel because of the humiliation they experienced at the hands of Yahweh, the Egyptians instead were killed and otherwise destroyed unmercifully. Someone here this morning is stressed out trying to figure out how you're going to defend yourself against your enemies. They have pursued us all of our lives. They have dogged us. They have hounded us. They have harassed us. They have tormented us time and time again. They have made it their point to try to slay us. All we've ever wanted was freedom from our enemies. We've prayed for years and years that God would do something about our adversaries, do something about our naysayers, do something about our haters. We prayed, please, Lord, give us some kind of relief. Well, this morning, our Heavenly Father says to us that those enemies that have harassed us, have hounded us, and have dogged us out, we will never see them again. He's going to use the very means of our escape and freedom as the weapons to bring our enemies down. The very gossip and rumors that others have spread unmercifully about us is the very gossip and rumors that will ultimately slay our haters and naysayers, the very plots, plans, and pitfalls that our associates, whether they are professional or personal, create have created to trip us up and to prevent us from, from achieving are the very plots, plans, and pitfalls that snare these individuals, the very conspiracies that others design to mar our reputations and our images are the very conspiracies that color these persons as untrustworthy and lack integrity 
The very schemes that they throw our way are the schemes that are going to hurt them. The very weapons that they create to kill us are the very weapons that are going to kill them. Our Heavenly Father has promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he's also promised that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. This morning, he has revealed to us that he fulfills those promises by using the very weapon meant to hurt and to harm us to kill off our enemies and adversaries. Just as he sought with Egypt, the world will know that he is Lord God Almighty through the victories that he gives us over our haters and our naysayers. Someone here ought to be celebrating. Someone here ought to be glorifying God because as you walk into work today, as you go into the gym today, as you move to your neighborhood today, some of your enemies God is about to remove from your from your presence, that you're going to never see them again, that they're never going to say anything to you again because God is about to deal with your enemies and your naysayers and your haters in a way that not only is he going to shut them up, he's going to shut them down. He's going to put them in a place where they will never be able to harm you again. They will never be able to speak a negative word about you again and you will find yourself having been removed from their presence, having been catapulted, having been increased, having been elevated to where God wants you to be. And you and you will have no worries because at that point, God is, has had, will have redirected you and sent you on to your promised land where you will experience a land flowing with milk and honey, a land full of things that you didn't build, a land full of, of crops you didn't plant, but are ready for you to harvest and ready for you to live in. God wants to do it for you. We just have to trust him that he's got everything's under control and that he's dealing with those who want to deal unmercifully and unkindly with us. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's have a word of prayer over our devotional this morning so that uh, God will let this devotional, this word seek into our spirit before we move to the prayer section of our call. Okay, we're getting ready to receive your prayer requests, your praise reports, your prayers, your words of encouragement, your testimony, your witnesses. If Even if you're on Facebook Live or you're on Periscope Live, you can share your prayer requests, your praise reports with us. All you have to do down at the bottom is type in what it is you want us to lift up in prayer and we will do that. There's no prayer request too small. There's no prayer request too insignificant. We want you to share it with us. But before we do that, let's have our word of prayer over our devotional, okay? Dear, dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now, right this very instant, God, praying, God, that you would be merciful to us, that you would be kind to us, that you would incline your ear to us. Thank you for this devotional, God, because hopefully, perfectly, this devotional has spoken to where many of us are, that many of us have bullies in our life. Many of us have persons that just hate on us for no other, no other reason other than hate, that for whatever reason, they're jealous, for whatever reason, they're envious, for whatever, for whatever reason, they are mad that, God, you have chosen to shower us with your favor. They don't realize that, God, you will shower them with your favor just as easily as you showered us if they would simply ask for it. Instead, God, they have felt that their purpose is to hound us, harass us, dog us, mistreat us, to be cruel to us. And God, for so long they've done that, it has felt like they have cast us into a form of mental and emotional slavery. But God, praises be to you, God, for, for freeing us from that, from separating us from those people that want to hurt, harm, and kill us, from separating us from those people that want to keep us enslaved to their smallness, to keep us enslaved to their jealousy and envy, keep us enslaved to their hate, God. Thank you, God, for freeing us from those persons and not only just freeing us from those persons, but using the very means to, that you that, that that you utilize to establish our freedom to kill off our haters and our naysayers. Now, they, we don't want to see any 
anyone dead, but you've taken the energy, you've taken the hate, you've taken the sting, you've taken the pain, you've taken the conspiracy, you've taken the plot, you've taken the weapon and you've destroyed it so that it can no longer hurt or harm us, that you, remo that you have removed us so far away from our haters and naysayers that they really mean nothing anymore. And God, we pray on this day that God, as you are moving us and freeing us from our haters and naysayers, that God, you won't even let us turn around to pay them any more attention, that God, you will continue to move us forward to the promised land that you have for us, that God, there's a promised land that you have for each of us, a place, God, that you have designed for us to operate in our calling with ease and with profession, a place, God, where you will shower us with true, uh, true blessings, a place, God, where we don't have to struggle, that we could live in and experience the fullness of your love for us, that God, you will have us focus on getting to that place so that God, we may glorify you, we may honor you, we may praise you, and we may exalt you in that place, God. God, we pray right now that as we move away from our devotional into the prayer section of our call, that God, you be with us. The word says, where two or more are gathered in your presence, there shall you be. God, the prerequisite, two or more are here. We are, God, anticipating and waiting, God, for you here. And God, we want you to come in to receive our prayer requests, to move on our lives, and to bless us in ways that we can't even imagine. Bless us in ways that we don't understand. Bless us in ways, God, that God that 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 encourage us and inspire us to be the best disciples and the best stewards that we can be. Because God, there's someone out there that's waiting to meet you today. Someone out there that's waiting to experience the fullness of your love for them. And God, you are sending us as your agents and as your instrumentalities and as your tools to share in that love with these persons. So God, fill us, increase us, magnify us, do what you need to do so that God, today, this may be the day that we bring you glory uh, to your name. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Praise God. I had to get a sip of water right quick. Uh, uh, this dry my voice out, dry my throat out. Amen. It's time for us, having said that now, it's time for us to... Um, to uh, begin the prayer section of our call, it's time for us to lift up the, uh, the prayer requests, the praise reports, the prayers, the words of encouragement, the testimonies, the witnesses that we have uh, have, and that God wants us to share. And I believe, and let me say this, let me say this to everyone, whether you're on the actual prayer conference call, whether you're on Periscope Live or you're on Facebook Live, even if you're on YouTube watching this, God wants us to share our prayer requests with one another. And let me tell you why he wants us to do it, okay? Sometimes we are going through things that are so rough, that are so tough, that we don't even have the words to articulate it. That there are times when we are in something and that something is beating us down. That something is mistreating us. That something is har is is haranguing us to the point that it takes all we can simply to keep our heads up. Someone knows what I mean. You in you're in you're in uh, you're in the water and it's so deep and there's no land looks so far away that it's all you can do just to tread water to keep your head above the water. But here's the thing. Someone else has been where you've been. Someone else has experienced what you experienced. And they may be just a little closer to coming out of it than we are. And because they're a little closer to coming out of it than we are, they may have that much more energy to actually raise the prayer request that will save not only them, but you. In other words, God gets a two for one because when you raise your prayer request, someone else is covered. Someone else is blessed. Someone else receives the grace and mercy of God because someone else who's going through that all they can do is go mm, groan moan that God links that prayer request with your prayer request and answers both and so I say all that to us to say don't sit on your prayer request today. Don't sit on uh, uh, your praise report. Don't sit on your words of encouragement or your testimony or your witness. You just don't know what God is planning to do in someone's life and that someone, I t I'm a 
pastor and I get blessed every time I hear one of you share your praise reports. When you share your words of encouragement, when you share your testimony, in fact, I get blessed when you share your prayer requests because it lets me know I'm not the only one dealing with what I'm dealing with. I'm not the only one going through what I'm going through. And so having said that, I know someone saying, Pastor, are you just going on and on and on and on and on? When are you going to be quiet so we can raise our prayer requests? Well, that moment has come. If you have a prayer request, praise report, prayer, words of encouragement, testimony, witness, give us your name and where you're calling from, and we'll go from there. Good morning, family. It's Jersey. Good morning, love. 